Hey everyone, it's Inspector Talon, and in front of me are a series of rail configurations that can be done in a survival world without any mods. In this video, I will show you and give you the tools to do these for yourselves. However, I challenge all of you to try to perform these as we go. So that being said, I will start off with the very beginning. There are four different types of rails. You have the normal rail, the powered rail, the activator, and the detector. The last three have specific interactions with minecarts. I will not be going into those interactions in depth in this video. It will be specific to rail behavior. So when placing a rail, it will check directionally for other rails to connect. When placing a normal rail, it will try to see if it can curve. So if I just have two rails, it will connect and become a straight rail, but with a third rail, it will curve. So over here, I have the different combinations that the rail can take based on the three rails that are required already when you place the, the central rail. Um, when the curve rail receives a redstone signal, it can also change the direction of the curve. Rails can also slope up when supported by a block um, above. The way to make it slope is to have a block or have a rail and a higher elevation than the one you will place and it will try to connect up and slope towards it. You can also update a previously flat rail by placing a rail at a higher elevation and then sloping it. When rails try to place and connect, they check for higher elevations before they check and give shape updates to lower elevation rails. So when I curve this rail, it will give a shape update to the lower rail here, same here. However, when I curve this rail here, it will try to connect to the rails up at the top. So these bottom rails do not receive a shape update. This also applies whenever you are pushing a rail. So when I push this rail forward, it will try to connect to these ones up here. But whenever I push it without this elevated rail, it will update the one below. And then this will slope. When pushed, rails will also try to maintain the orientation that it had before. So it will try and connect to this rail before it updates and changes the direction to connect to this one. So when I push, it will stay. However, when I push this one, it will change direction. This is something that was changed in 1.15. In older versions, 1.14 and later, this would not be the case. It would try to, it would just check directionally um, where to redirect. So if it was the incorrect direction here, it would just do this and then have this rail. So in, um, when pushing a rail, it will try to give the shape placement updates before checking to see if it actually has a support block on it. So if I push this rail down, it will update these rails down here and they will slope. Same here. So once I push this rail, it will redirect before checking to see if it has a support. Same goes for up here. Uh, if I push this rail, because of the way that 
sloped rails update, they update one block higher than flat rails, they will it will redirect the rail up here. The powered and activated rail variants can also be powered whenever they receive a redstone signal. So the rails will power eight blocks outwards from the source. So when I turn this lever on, this powered rail will become the source and same with this activator rail. So you see if I add on to the line, it will not power any further. Activators and powered rails also will power separately. So this will not connect to this power source there. This state change can be detected by observers. So as you can see here, and this powering mechanism allows for some interesting behavior as well. So rails will try to check for the source and the direction that it's connecting to the source. So if the source is here and it wants to power along this line, if you were to ever go back, it won't connect to this power source. So I can quickly show that over here. Whenever I update this rail, this rail is not powered because it's going backwards in the signal line. And this rail is not powered because this rail is connecting upwards. Since this rail believes that it is connected to this rail, it will consider this a power source and this can lead to a bud. So if you aren't aware of what a bud is, um, that would be a block update detector. And the most commonly used version would be QC from pistons. Uh, here's an example here. Uh, but you can also do it through rail powering. So this rail believes that it is being powered by this source here. However, the source itself has not actually updated this rail to tell it to turn off. So it remains turned on. You can also do it with this configuration here. If I push this piston up, this rail, which is rail line, which is powered, will power this rail. And then when I retract the piston, it won't receive the update to turn off so it will stay budded. Over here is a instant wire that Kaizen created using this mechanic and the same type of rail bud. Um, you can pull a signal from observing the rail state change and this can be updated from any block on the line. As you can see it's resetting. Now moving on to detector rails. Detector rails will have a 20 game tick cooldown after they've been activated by a minecart. However, if you retract the detector rail, it will reset the cooldown. So if I retract both these pistons, you'll see that this one stays on, whereas this detector rail will cut off. Now, finally, as of 117 and higher, rails can be waterlogged. Um, this allows for some interesting behavior with flowing water. Um, there is a lot that this allows for in terms of minecart movement. However, that is not within the scope of this video. I will very likely make a video dedicated to this in the future. Now, as for the rail placement challenge, I can show you all how to do the first challenge and I would like you all to try to do the rest for yourselves. The first thing you want to do is set the bottom rail. 
Now remember, rails will connect upwards before they connect downwards. So in order to avoid play, uh, this rail being updated, you want to set it first and then change how the rails above it are connecting. So in this instance, it's quite easy because you can use the other 1.15 mechanic where the, uh, the rail will try to connect towards the way that the player is facing or the way that it's being pushed before connecting to other directions. So then you can redirect the way that the rail is facing by removing this rail and then giving it a shape up placement update from a different auxiliary rail. That is the core of how each of these work. Um, it goes in ascending difficulty with this one being the hardest. And here I have a few normal rail curve challenges. These require pistons to be performed. All of these can be done with blocks and rails. So good luck to all of you. Thank you for watching. And if you would like to ask more questions or would like to show the results of these challenges, please check out the Kartkives Discord server. Um, I want to give a big thank you to Hexatron for um, doing a lot of the innovation with curved rail manipulation, as well as showing me several of um, these rail placement tricks. So um, between the both of us, we have discovered quite a bit. So thank you all for watching and have a good one.